Hey, you're still with me. That's awesome. Okay, so we were working on example five. We found the equation of the function here, and now they're asking us to graph the original and its inverse on the grid. Now we could grab our calculators for that, but you know what? Sometimes it's just as easy to do it by hand to get it somewhat accurate. So um, what we're going to do is use the old y equals mx plus b. The b is your y-intercept. So from this original equation, we know the y-intercept is 2. And we also know the number in front of x is our slope, which is 3. So from this y-intercept, we would go up 3, three and then over 1, because 3 is like 3 over 1, if you're looking at the rise over the run there. Or we could go 1, 2, 3 down, and then over 1 this way to get a line going, basically. OK, so we're going to draw a line in there, and that is our original function. Original, which was y equals 3x minus, or plus 2. Okay, now the inverse we have is y equals 1 third x minus 2 thirds. Now, okay, 2 thirds is a little ugly to graph, but it's negative, and it wouldn't be quite to negative 1, so we would plot it somewhere in there. Our slope is 1 third, so from that negative 2 thirds, we would go up 1, so about here, and over 3. 1, 2, 3, we would be right here. Okay, and we could do the same thing, go down 1, and over the other way, 1, 2, 3. So somewhere in there. So we should have something like this for the inverse. Okay, which is y equals 1 third x minus 2 thirds. Okay, is the inverse of the function defined by the equation y equals 3x plus 2 also a function? So is our blue line graph also a function? Does a vertical line only pass through it once anywhere we draw a vertical line? And yes, it is. So yes, it is a function. All right, let's look at the next page. Oh, this is where we graph the inverse of a function using our calculator, and it's kind of a cool command, actually. So we're going to need our graphing calculator for this, and we're going to walk through this one to see how it's done. Let's just scoot down to the example that we need to do. Okay, Use the procedure to confirm the graph of the inverse in class example 4a. The original graph has an equation of y equals absolute value of x minus 3. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple of ways we could do this. Um, so let's bring up our graphing calculator and we're going to put this function in y1 to begin with. Okay, so you can start on that. Uh, pause your video. Okay, so in y1 we're going to be putting the absolute value of x minus 3. And so to do that we've got to bring up the absolute value. So math, uh, go over to the right to num and we want the first one. ABS. Okay, and we only want the absolute value of x, so we need to end that bracket, and then we have minus 3. Okay, now let's just go zoom standard to get our windows back to normal in case they were something different, and there we go, absolute value function. Now we want the inverse. There's a couple ways we can do this. From this graphing screen, what we can do is hit program and go to Okay, this might not work the way I thought it would. Um, hang on. Okay, sorry, I got that. Um, second program is what we want. Okay, and that takes us to draw, which makes sense. We want to draw um, the inverse of that. So let's go down until we see the inverse. There we go, draw inverse, number eight. Okay, and we're going to hit enter there. Okay, now it's going to ask us what we want to draw the inverse of. Well, our equation we put in is in y1 right now, so we need to bring up the variable y1. To find that, that's under vars, which stands for variables. Okay, we want the y variables, so over here, and then function, and there's y1 for us. So hit 1 again, and there we go. We have y1. Draw the inverse of y1. So hit enter. And look at that, it drew it right on there. Now it looks a little weird, right? Because I think, w because this isn't truly square. If we choose a different window by going zoom square, number five. Oh, and then we'll have to hit uh, draw inverse again. So let's try that one more time. 
program number eight, okay? Or here's a better idea. If you want to repeat the command you just had, go second, enter, and it brings it up, and then you just have to hit enter. And there we go. That looks better because our line of reflection, that y equals x, would be running right down the middle here. And it looks like it's reflected over. So here's our original v. And then this line here is our inverse, this v going sideways. Oh, looks pretty cool. Another way to do it, if you don't want to draw the original function on your graph, you just want the inverse of that, is going to y equals, clear this, okay? Then we'll go back. Okay, do we still have the inverse on there? Good, it's gone. Okay, and then we go second program. Okay, and again, go down to number eight, draw inverse, and Whoops, what happened there? Sorry about that. So I'm just going to go second, enter. Oh, we must quit out of the graph first. OK, draw inverse. OK, so what we want to do here is we want to type in our equation. OK, I'm going to use brackets. OK, and then we're going to go, again, math, num, absolute, value, type in x. So we're putting our equation here instead of, and then minus 3, instead of in y equals. All right, end your bracket, and let's hit enter, see what happens. There we go. There's our inverse without the original being graphed. So that can be handy. All right, so keep that in mind for this lesson. If we just go back here, okay, we used the procedure, all good. There's really not a lot of notes to take there. It was all done on the calculator. So you should be able to do the questions assigned on Lesson 6, and part of this is to con continue on and do Lesson 7 as well. So please proceed to that video as well. Thank you.